We're here at ITU Telecom World 2012, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Patricia Northland, who is CEO of Satmex. Patricia, thank you very much for being with us today. Pleasure to be here, Max. I'd like to start off by talking about debates here at ITU Telecom World 2012 have been focusing on the radical changes that they've been to the ICT sector and their implications for the industry and the world in which we live. What for you is the principal opportunity arising from this transformation? For me, Max, uh, all my life I've been building uh, telecommunication networks, um, building fiber optics, satellites, especially in emerging markets like in Latin America. And one of the things that is very interesting for me that there is a, a significant leapfrog in technologies adopting, for example, in Latin America today more cellular line than fixed lines. But that leapfrog of technology is also a leapfrog of, I would say, of the human behavior of people. Because as we see on all our young generation, they already adopt 100% the use of internet as a natural way for them to communicate. So that particular transformation is not just on the IP convergence of various services, but also in the way culturally that the next generation that will lead this uh, world will communicate. So from my perspective, the opportunity is really in really bridging the gap between the people in this uh, uh, emerging markets that yet don't have a full uh, broadband penetration of high-speed internet, uh, our ability as responsible operator to accelerate uh, that uh, gap by providing uh, with low-cost broadband uh, various technologies to, to reach that goal. And what are the major challenges facing you in implementing this? I see uh, in our world maybe a couple of challenges. Uh, first, uh, we would like to continue, I think all of us, for the internet to continue to grow. And that means to be a, to have the freedom of a, a flow of information uh, throughout all the various broadband networks. On the other hand, and as a balance, we always have to be careful uh, on what we call the cybersecurity. So on one side, we wanted to make it and keep it uh, full access to all the people in the world, but yet uh, have a delicate balance of having the right uh, policy, perhaps infrastructure, education to the users, whether it's government or private sectors or individuals, to make sure that we sort of sanitize the network. I think the third challenge is our ability to continue to reach uh, to all people with a high-speed internet. And when we say high-speed, continue to be higher and higher because of the additional content. So the cost of the broadband has to be such that continue to be a, a way for all of us to communicate. And finally, I think it's very, very important for us to, uh, to, to everybody participate in this uh, world of, uh, the new world of uh, knowledge uh, space is to, to bring best practices from the developed world to all our emerging uh, market countries. There is yet a lot of need to be developed uh, with the, I would say, on, particularly on the regulatory bodies. Uh, there is a lot of education for them to understand, not to have fears, how they, they can proliferate the internet, how can they motivate competition uh, in various type of uh, uh, services. So I think that that is one of the uh, other challenges and yet at the same time a vision for the future that I see in our uh, region of Latin America and certainly in, in all of the uh, places in the world. And finally I'd like to ask you, here at ITU Telecom World 2012, it's a very important event in the calendar, but why is it important to you and what key message would you like to deliver to here to our uniquely influential audience? The Telecom uh, 2012 is uh, incredible, uh, important because it allows us to participate on sharing a lot of ideas and create more creativity. So that synergy allows us to keep growing in, in, in this world of, uh, of ICD. One key message that I would like to propose to the international community and to the ATU is our, our ability to rationalize the frequencies on the satellite space. For example, today we are able to, with new innovation of satellite technology, 
using a, what we call it all electric satellites. We're able to reduce by 50% a satellite program. That means for about 360 million to about 160 million costs. That is very, very important to uh, utilize a satellite for broadband. However, and using KA band frequencies, multiply, multiply that by tenfold. The issue we have today that the KA band applications are right now about 2,500 applications at the ITU of uh, KA band satellites. However, only there are 17 under construction. Furthermore, uh, out of all these 2,500 applications, uh, they are in the hands of about 75% of them only in 12 countries of the entire ITU community. So the message for all the international community and the ITU is find ways so we can free up uh, this orbital location to actually execute real satellite projects uh, to facilitate bridging the gap via satellite broadband. Patricia Northern, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. My pleasure. Thank you.